this is the basic setup for running the uh, plotting program using our, the Arduino and uh, Python. Um, just basically a uh, an Uno or a Mega here generating uh, random numbers and sending it to the serial port. The numbers are coming across here and then it's plotting it in real time. Um, this is a very powerful tool and um, it can be easily done using minimal code and the serial library for Python. And then that will allow you to capture data and send data from the PC to the Uno or uh, Arduino and then from the Arduino back to the PC and manipulate in both cases. That's really what this video is about. And um, I would like to show you the basics of how to do that and get started. And then from there, you can do whatever you want. Uh, you can expand it into 3D modeling or any sort of analysis or, or whatever. This sketch is going to show you how to collect data from your Arduino serial port and bring it into a Python module or sketch and graph it running real time on the screen like you see here. The numbers here are coming from the Arduino board through the serial port into the Python shell and then those numbers are being used in a module to create this this graph over here. And what's important about that is it allows you to take data that your Arduino generates either from some sort of module or video or audio or whatever you have um, hooked up to your Arduino project and take that data and plot it out and see what it looks like in real time. Uh, there are different charts that you can do and, and that sort of thing. Um, there's also 3D modeling that you can generate using Python that allows you to interact with your module, uh, your Mega or your Uno, and see it graphically in 3D modeling uh, on your laptop and process it uh, in real time, which is very powerful because uh, Python is a very powerful program and it's free, which is nice. Um, and there's lots and lots of open source modules that allow you to do all sorts of things. So I thought this would be a good time to kind of just show you um, the basics um, of using Python with your Arduino. Uh, you don't have to know a whole lot about Python programming, but I will give you the shortcut uh, videos to watch and to get you up and going, at least enough to do a graph or do a 3D uh, model image. And then from there you can do whatever you want. So now I'd like to show you a number of the websites that I use to gather data and information on how to read and write data to and from the Arduino and Python, and also how to create the, the, the uh, real-time plotting and 3D images and, and that sort of thing. And some of the classes I kind of took and listened to that helped me get started with Python and uh, uh, make sense of this whole new kind of Python world. Uh, the first one that actually started me off was this guy's uh, class on uh, Learn Python Full Course for Beginners. It's four hours and 26 minutes, and I would suggest not sitting down and watching the whole thing at once. Uh, but other than that, uh, he gives a very, very good explanation of, of how to use Python, uh, some of the basic syntax, how to understand how Python works. It's a little different. It's a higher level language. And fundamentally, the key is uh, instead of using parentheses and line delineation like a semicolon or whatever, um, you use indentation. And that's really the key. You indent. So if you have a for loop, you have the for in column one, and then you indent five tab spaces or four tab spaces, and you put your for code, and then you indent back to the column one, and that is outside the for loop. And it's that simple. That's what Python really, in a nutshell, programming is, is makes it so intuitive. 
it's a very cool language. And I really encourage you to take this guy's freecodecamp.org uh, class. He has one for uh, C code and all sorts of other ones. Um, he does a great job. He's, he's laid back. He gives excellent examples. He's clear. He's concise. He's right to the point. Start off with this. Uh, go through the, the four hours slowly, and um, you'll be able to understand Python by, at the end of it. So after I took this class, I then went and kind of searched around and found out, you know, how do you control the Arduino with Python? Well, I came across this website using Python with the Arduino controlling an LED, which is pin 13 on the Uno or, or the Mega. And this whole website uh, uh, describes um, how to um, do that. And, and something I should point out back over here, this is his website up here. But you can search on Python and full course and free code and all that and get it. Uh, this is the website up here and you can do a Google search on this and, and find it also. So all of these websites, um, I have the address, but I will include the, uh, the website in notes uh, in one of the files so that you can get to it um, and access the, the websites easily. It'll be in the code. Anyway, back to this. Um, basically, uh, um, get rid of this. Uh, he talks about how to connect Arduino with, the, uh, with Python and how they communicate, and he, he does a great job. Very basic, goes through how to install PIP and Python and, and that sort of thing. So I would encourage you to uh, start second with doing this. Uh, next, here's his video, and here's the website of the YouTube video. Um, here's his video on how he describes it. So you can read about it here, and then you can watch it here. And then uh, he has the code you can download and that sort of thing uh, in his notes below. So that got me started. Once I got the two communicating, I kind of branched out and learned more. I then learned that there are other modules that you can download. And this is the pypy.org. Uh, you can see the website there that I was telling you about. This is where lots of information is stored, uh, tons of files, tons of libraries. Um, when you download a, a, a program that does something very specific, like serial access, like, um, uh, like you do for Arduino, you download the, the ping module. Well, or the ping library, you do the same thing here. These are all libraries, uh, indexes, I guess they package index, they call them. And um, you just type in whatever you want uh, here. Like for instance, if you wanted the serial, you type in serial. If you wanted uh, NumPy, N-U-M-P-Y, you do it here and click, uh, click search over here. And it would come up with a web file. For instance, if you do Pi serial, here's Pi serial. And here's the pip install. And you would select this, you would copy uh, this command to uh, your clipboard, and then you would go out to your DOS command prompt in your um, serial, um, I mean, in your Python directly directory, and you would paste it in and hit run, and it would install PySerial for you, and you'd be up and going with PySerial, able to do um, uh, um, this handshaking, and that's how easy it is, because you have the serial uh, library in, uh, imported into your Python program. It's all ready to go. So that's how you find it. Uh, this is PySerial. Another one here is vPython. I told you how to do the three-dimensional uh, uh, images or, or graphics, and vPython will do that for you. And, and that's how you would download and install the vPython. And, it, and during the installation, you want to select uh, the vidle editor in order to run your code and generate the three-dimensional images. So that's um, really nice to have. Um, this is a, um, Python for Beginners. This is a, a nice little uh, website. And uh, get rid of that. And then it talks about how you use the open function, f different file types, end of line characters. Open function gives you the code on how to do it. Um, very intuitive, very good for learning the basics and um, how to learn Python and, and uh, basic code structure. So this is really nice also. Lastly, 
Uh, this is the gentleman that I was telling you about that has, that gives the using Python and Arduino classes. Here he talks about understanding local and global variables in Arduino. So if you want to learn more about the Arduino, there's Arduino lessons. If you want to learn um, about using Python and Arduino, there's a uh, using Python and Arduino tab. These are all other uh, tabs that I don't use. So with learning the uh, Python and Arduino, he has, uh, good Lord, I think he's got uh, uh, 20, 30 lessons here uh, that you click on. And I think one of the lessons I actually used was this lesson 11 was how to plot live data using Arduino and Python with MATLAB, MATPLOTLAB, and uh, uh, LIB, Math, MATPLOTLIB, that's tough to say, and that's what allows you to do the graphics, and um, he, he has lots of lessons here, uh, looks like 12, 17 lessons, and uh, they're all quite good, and he's quite slow, and they range anywhere from... Uh, six, seven minutes up to 45 minutes. So uh, these are the websites that I used primarily to get this project uh, going and functional. And I think if you go through these and listen to the classes and listen to these little notes and uh, the little YouTube videos, you'll be at a point where you can actually then um, start doing your own Python Arduino two-way communication, whether you're using Bluetooth or the serial port or Wi-Fi or whatever you want with your laptop, you've now increased the programming and computational power of just the Arduino with your laptop. And I think this is a very powerful tool. And Python is a very powerful language that is an industry standard, and it's just getting bigger and bigger. So... Um, that's why I wanted to give you, uh, at least point out the key um, websites that I used. So these are the two programs that initiated me making this video to begin with. This is the uh, Python module or sketch uh, module that uh, uh, communicates the Arduino, and this is the Arduino sketch that communicates back to the Python on your laptop. And um, I saw this and I thought, well, this would be really handy uh, to use to process uh, Arduino sketches and send the data up to your laptop and have it save the data onto the hard drive instead of using an SD card or um, basically taking that data and saving it and putting it into other programs to analyze it and then maybe sending the data back to uh, the Arduino. So uh, basically what this does is really simple. I've already uploaded this, um, uh, this, this sketch to the Mega and basically all, and I'll, I'll zoom in here and describe how it works. Um, but let's see what it basically does. If we uh, run the program here, run the module, you'll see that it says done and it, it comes back. And I'm, like I said, I'll have a close up of this here uh, next. Uh, it says, hi, uh, I am Arduino. So basically, Arduino sent data from here to the Python program. The Python program captured that data, printed it out, and then it responded, enter 1 uh, to turn on the LED or 0 to turn it off. And if you hit 1, you'll notice over here the pin 13 will go high. There, it just went on. Now we hit 0. It just went off. And let's you can see that again. It's off now. We hit 1, goes on. We hit 0 goes off. So now the Python program is communicating directly to the Arduino. And the Arduino is processing that and activating a pin. And that is very uh, powerful. And that's why I want to get this video out for um, people that are making projects where they need to do analysis of data or collect data or save it or have basically communication between a, a PC or a laptop and your Arduino and, and use uh, Python, which is very similar to um, uh, to uh, C++ that the Arduino uses. The syntax is a little bit different, but they all kind of, it's very similar. So let's take a look at the code and watch it run again. So a closer look at the two, the two programs. We'll start off with the Arduino. It's the simplest. Um, basically, um, you create uh, an integer called data that you're going to be sending. 
Uh, and then in the setup, you begin your serial begin uh, 9600. Um, we assign the pin mode LED uh, built-in pin as output, which is pin 13. And we digitally write the uh, LED built-in pin uh, low to turn it off. Um, next, we do a serial print line, hi, I am Arduino. And that's what's sent up the serial port. So you don't want to turn, you don't want to, have the serial monitor running when um, you use the read statements and you start reading from Python. Uh, if you have the serial monitor open, it will lock the serial monitor and Python won't be able to find it. So basically what the Arduino sketch is going to do is it's just going to do a print and read, print and read, and keep sending it up the serial port thinking that it's sending it to a serial monitor, but it's just sending it up the serial uh, port and the Python program will take command here and um, take that data and process it and send it back down to the Arduino. So keep that in mind. You can't run the serial port and run the Python uh, module at the same time. So back to the, the sketch here. After you've printed this, uh, the Python mo uh, module will read this in and print it out to the screen. And that's all the data handling that it takes from the Arduino, uh, the, par the Python program takes from the Arduino. Next, the Arduino goes into kind of this loop mode and it continually s scans the serial port to see if there's any, um, any data coming in from the Python program. When it does find a one or a zero, it assigns that to the variable data. And if the data is equal to one, it digitally writes the LED pin high. And uh, else, if the data pin is zero, it writes it low. And that's it. It just keeps reading the serial port, looking for data, which is a one or a zero. And that's all the Arduino program does. Now, the Python program has a little more going on than the Arduino uh, sketch. This module is is, is still pretty basic. Uh, what allows it to work is this import serial. And you were gonna, you're going to want to go to the website pi, and download Pi Serial, P-Y-S-E-R-I-A-L, uh, and install that in your Python program. And I'll show you how to do that, or I've showed you how to do that. And so uh, you also want to import time because there is a time variable here that allows it to pause. And you want it to wait a couple seconds because the the Arduino can send data too fast for the Python to keep up because it has to do some processing and then it can just sit there and spin and nothing will ever come up. So you, you need some time buffering to make it work um, as a delay. Uh, the next uh, line here we have is we just print done. Once these are all established, we say done. That's kind of initialization. And then we set the Arduino serial to serial which is uh, part of the library, and I call it, I create a, an object called serial, and COM5 at 9600 baud. Well, my COM5 is down here from my Arduino, and I have the Arduino uh, serial monitor uh, set to 9600, and I have 9600 set here. So everything's in sync as far as the bit rate. Next, we, we call time, and we sleep for two seconds to allow the communication to happen. And then here we do a print Arduino serial read line. We actually read the serial data coming in from um, the Arduino. Uh, and then we, um, we print that out. And that will be the, we're reading a full line, but we're also sending a full line here in double quotes. Uh, and it'll print that out. So that, that's where we get the high IM Arduino. It gets printed here. Next, we print to the screen, enter 1 to turn on LED or 0 to turn off LED. This is where we get the data from the user uh, to send data back to the Arduino. And so we do while 1 or while true, same thing. This is kind of a uh, the, the void loop. This is a loop. It's just going to keep going forever. Variable or var equals raw input, which is uh, a keyboard input from, uh, from your keyboard. And then you print you entered whether it's a one or a zero. And if the var is a one, we do an Arduino serial write one. So we're writing along the serial port 
we're actually writing, not reading. We're sending a one to the Arduino and we print LED turned on and then we sleep for a second. And this is where uh, if data is one, it's reading the serial port. We sent it here. It reads it here. If it's a one, it turns the LED on and then it continues to wait for more data. Now we um, we get a message and we, we know that if we do zero, we can turn it off. So here, if a var equals zero, we uh, send Arduino serial, which is this serial port here, serial write zero, print LED turned off, and then we wait a second. And then over here, we read the zero, we process it. If it's zero, we digitally write it low, and we're done. And that's how we turn it on and off. So let's see um, this working here on the screen. So now it said done which is this right here. And then it says, hi, I'm, I'm Arduino, which is this string here being sent uh, up here and printed um, right here. Now enter one to turn on LED, zero to turn off. So we type one, hit enter. And it said, you entered one, LED turned on. And now we do, and of course the LED, like you saw in the video earlier, turned on and we do zero, you entered zero, LED turned off. And so um, that just keeps going back and forth. And that's basically how they communicate back and forth. Um, that was what started this video. And then from since they now can communicate back and forth, you can now capture the data, process it, send it back down to Arduino to do other things. Um, uh, you can store data sent from the Arduino, all sorts of things. So it, it's, it's actually quite powerful. And that's the reason um, uh, uh, I did this video. Something I want to also mention is sometimes uh, when there's a time delay, uh, you get a fault uh, in your shell here when, when, you, um, when you go to run it up here, you get an error code. And it'll be some nasty red lines like 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 that. Uh, run it once or twice at least, at least twice sometimes, because sometimes the error goes away. And um, uh, that turns out to be um, just a timing glitch. So with serial communication, a timing glitch is an issue. So keep that in mind. Not to, Whenever it sometimes doesn't work, you get an error message. Try it again. Sometimes it, it, it does go away. This is the Arduino sketch I used to generate uh, serial output to, to plot. And um, it's real basic. It's just a random number generator um, that generates a series of numbers that are printed out to the serial monitor. If I launch the serial monitor, you'll see that it comes up and there the numbers are. They're integers from 1 to 20 and um, they're sent along the serial monitor and from the serial monitor um, the Python program will pick out each integer and um, put it into an array and then plot it and each number is on its own line, so when you do a, a line read or something, you're getting just one number. So it's one number per line. That's why I used a, uh, I used a, a, a print line so that it would print all on one. Each line would be an individual, unique number. So let's shut this down. You get the idea there. Let's go over the code here. Um, I gave a little homage here to um, the guy that runs this website. Um, he does a class or something, I'm not really sure, but he, it's, the title is Python and Arduino Real-Time Plotting. Um, he plots data being sent from the Arduino to the Python program and plots it in real time, and he gives a, break, a great breakdown on how to do that. Uh, except he was using the Arduino and a temperature and pressure and he was sending two different sets of data and separating by a comma. I, I didn't want to do all that stuff. 
Um, I basically just wanted to simplify it and make it easier, so uh, I just have random numbers. And so to do that, um, initially I did a long random number, but uh, you don't need to do that. I just did an integer random number and um, uh, set that up. And then in the void setup, I set up the serial um, data baud rate as a 115,200. That's to allow the data to get up to uh, the Python program fast enough and to process it. You can slow it down, but it works fine at 115,200, so that's what I did. Um, now, to generate a random number, you do random seed, and then you can analog read a, a pin. And it says here if the analog input pin is unconnected, which mine is, the random analog noise will cause the call to, to random seed to generate a different seed number each time sketch runs. Um, the random seed will then fu uh, shuffle the random function. So uh, this generates a nice random seed uh, each and every time it's run, and it's different. So uh, that's why I did it. You can put a number in there to start it off, I suppose. Um, I didn't want to do that. You don't have to do a, uh, a, a random seed. If you don't want to, you can just call the random function and have it go from there. Uh, it doesn't really matter for this application. Uh, the loop is real simple. Uh, print a random number from 1 to 20. Uh, ran number equals random 1 to uh, minimum of 1 up to 21, but not including 21. It just goes up to 20, 1 minus that. And then I print that serial print line that so that I print the random number and then I do a carriage return to a new line and I delay that by 50 milliseconds to give it uh, to slow down this whole process uh, a little bit again if you get too much communication happening too fast uh, between the serial port and the Arduino board and the Python program it the Python program will just the screen will come up and it'll just hang um, and I don't want that, so I tried to slow it down a little bit. Uh, but fundamentally, that's it. That's all that generates. Uh, that's all you need to do. There's no wiring, hooking up, or anything like that. Um, something to keep in mind. Um, you can't run the serial monitor here and the Python um, module at the same time. Uh, when the Python module takes control of the serial port, this won't work. You'll get an error in Python, or you won't be able to open this if Python's running first. So depending on what's running first. So you, you, you can't really run the serial monitor, so you don't really want to run it. You want to leave it off. You want to have it all plugged in and running automatically, but you want to leave it off. The second thing to keep in mind is Arduino refers to uh, this uh, this code as a sketch. Um, Python refers to it as a module. So this is not a sketch. This is a module. Uh, if this was a Python program, it would be called a module. And you would run the module or you would check the module. And so keep that kind of in mind. Sketch versus module. Um, it's just slightly different. So here we have the actual plotting of the data from the Arduino. I have uploaded the random generation sketch that I showed earlier that generates random numbers between 0 and 20 and sends them up the serial port. And you see them being displayed by the Python module or program here. These are all the plot points. And each one of these little blue dots between the red lines represents one of these numbers. And so this is real data coming in, in real time, uh, and it's plotting it while the Arduino is sending data, and the Python module or sketch is, or not, yeah, module is, is showing the data in real time. And I'm only showing uh, 50 plots at a time, and then I'm losing the older data, and then the r random number is generated along the side here. And I have a little legend that says random numbers, and then a title that says my live streaming random data. Not terribly exciting, but it basically uh, tells what's going on. Um, there are some tricks to generating a blue dot with red lines and 
you can make this a triangle or a square or just dots. You don't need to have the lines. It's there's a lot of options using Python, so that's what's nice about using it to plot. And it's also nice that you can plot in real time. So let's take a look at the code and see what's generating all of this uh, this input, if you, if you will. So here's the sketch or the, the, the module. They call it a module because when you go to run that you run module or you check module. Um, and what it is, what we're using here is is this video right here on YouTube. This is the uh, the basis of what started all this, and I encourage you to go there and uh, check out um, his classes and what he has to say. He does a great job. Uh, I don't remember his name, uh, uh, describing how all this works. So I'm just going to go over it very simply and quickly, um, and it should be self-explanatory. So. Let's start out here. Uh, you have to import some libraries. The serial library I told you about, it gets the data from the Arduino. NumPy is NumPy, which is used to obviously here to handle arrays. We need that. Uh, Matplotlib, uh, we import that library and we rename it as PLT so it's easier to type. This is what does all the plotting and the blue lines and the red dots and the legends and all that. And then draw now, uh, we import the whole library. That's what the star means. The draw now is what allows it to show it in real time moving, which is what we want. Okay, given that, I'm going to try to explain this. I'm not a Python expert, but uh, like I said, the gentleman that has this video up here can do a better job, but I'm going to do it overall so that you get the basic idea. Uh, here we have a random number array, just an empty array. Uh, that's where my random numbers are going to be stored. Uh, Arduino data is a serial dot serial uh, COM5 11, uh, 115,200 baud rate. Uh, if you go to um, uh, the Arduino sketch, you will get this information. I set everything a, a little bit faster with the n uh, random numbers for communication wise. This serial uh, uh, classification is part of this serial library. And then plot.ion, um, I stands for interactive and ON I guess means on. So it turns interactive on, which means it allows it to plot it um, continuously. Uh, I set a counter here to zero. This counter represents uh, counting uh, as I showed um, with the program running from uh, zero to 50. So it only shows 50 um, uh, grid lines or increments and then stops. And that's what the, uh, then the graph starts to go off to the left and you lose the older data. That's what this counter is used for. Um, there's a def statement here called def make figure. Um, this is like a, a function or a routine in, uh, in C++ when you do the Arduino coding. Uh, this is only run when you call it. We're not passing in any variables. It'll set up um, uh, the little graph, the little white graph that has the barcode going across it, the streaming data. And so PLT is, again, what we called uh, matplotlib.pyplot. We renamed it as PLT just because it's easier to read. And the Y limb goes from 0 to 30. That's on the left side. Uh, that's the vertical uh, uh, grid, or not grid, but uh, vertical, vertical scale. Because uh, I only plot from 1 to um, 20, so there's a little headroom there. Uh, the plot title is called My Living Stream Random Data. Uh, we turn on grid. Plot.grid is a command. You set it to true. That gives you the grid. Uh, the Y label is actually in that little uh, legend, and it, uh, it, it sets it up as random number. And, um, or actually, no, the Y label is uh, along uh, the, the bottom. And that's the label. It says random number. And then the plot, PLT plot random number array. Um, this is the actual uh, random number array that we've read up here. I'll show you more about it down here. This is the incoming data from the Arduino is actually in this array. And it's going to make a red line. And it's going to use a dot as a marker. And um, the marker face is going to be blue. So we're going to have red lines with blue dot. 
and the label's going to be called random numbers, and that'll put it uh, up in this legend. And then the location for the plot legend is in the upper left, and you can do it center or right or middle or lower left, wherever you want. So that's that makes the figure. That actually makes the, the plot show on the screen. That's it. Very few lines of code. You can add or subtract uh, options as you wish, arguments as you wish, and and uh, it's that simple. Um, you can look up matplotlib uh, under um, uh, on the internet. I think it, I think pi pi p y p i dot com will have or dot org will have. Uh, the commands, but you can you can look it up, and um, I'll try to include that in the video so that you can see where to look up that information. Um, there is uh, um, uh, uh, information on that under I think under beginning Python or something, but you can look at you can just search on matplotlib uh, commands, and it'll bring up somewhere in the internet what all the options are, uh, arguments are. Uh, a lot of inf all of these have a lot of arguments. I'm not using nearly any of them. So, getting back to the code here, uh, we've defined uh, our our graph, and then while true, this is so that it loops forever. Obviously, um, while the Arduino Arduino data in waiting is equal to zero, meaning there's no data, we continue to wait, and then once this is not a zero, meaning there's data there, a number we pass, we do nothing, we just get out of the loop and we come down to here. And I, these are all commented out, these little ask, these little pound symbols. Um, I did a little thinning of the code, so you don't need this anymore. Right now I have it set up so that the random number uh, is equal to uh, float Arduino data dot read line. And then um, basically uh, this is reading a, a, a full line of of the numbers coming in, and the numbers coming in are going to be uh, numbers of from one to twenty. And it's just going to be one number per line. So it's basically just reading one number and putting it in random number. And then what we're doing is I'm printing that number, and that's that blue numbers that come out. Next, I'm taking the random number array and I'm appending that number into the array. So I'm building up this array uh, as the numbers come in. Uh, next, there's a program called Draw, Draw Now, which we imported up here, and this is what actually draws the graph, and that's called Make Figure. And here's our Make Figure that I described earlier. And what happens is we do uh, a plot a PLT pause for just a brief second to allow the draw program to generate the screen. Then we increment the counter, and if the counter is greater than 50, then we um, pop off the random number array that's the older data, which means uh, at, at starting at, at position 0. So the very first, because it, it goes from 0 to 49, because there's um, uh, 50 I'm going to count. And so the very first one in the array gets popped off. And that's what gives it the illusion that the graph is moving off the screen. And that's basically how um, the graph reads data and prints it and um, shows it up and then has it move off the screen and lays out, you know, up here using this function, lays out all the accesses and data points and lines and that sort of thing. And again, keep in mind, right here, random number array is where the uh, data that has been picked up from the Arduino, right here, Arduino is stored in. So here's random number array, and we're appending random number, which is the number that we read. So this is where we actually print our data, and this is how we print our data. And you can do interesting things. You can change this random number array and have it say something like random number array um, uh, uh, plus five, and it would shift the whole thing up five, or, or whatever you want. It, it's it's it, at that point you can change the data any way you want and plot it or handle it any way you want. In the same fashion, you can do that down here. Once you have uh, the number, random number, you can uh, you know multiply this by a hundred if you want and change the ran the random number value. So you can bring the data in, modify it, and plot it any way you want. And that's what's really nice about uh, uh, this 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 program. So let me. Um, bring this up and I'm going to run the module 
And so here it is running. And you're going to see the data here. Here it is plotting. And it's going from 0 to 14, 16, 17, 20. And eventually, that counter uh, will get to 50. And once it gets to 50, this data will start moving off the line or off the page. And there, see, it stops at 50. And we're still getting this data. And again, these little blue dots are all of these values coming into that array, being plotted, the old data popping off. Uh, our legend is here, upper left uh, corner. Uh, here's a title. Here's the axis, the x-axis uh, um, or y-axis uh, uh, name. I didn't put anything down here. I could have put something down here too, just by adding something in that make in the make fig uh, 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 function. Uh, but uh, I didn't. So this is how you plot uh, data real time from the Arduino, and this is what's so powerful. So I thought that once I saw this, I thought this is something that really needs to be added on to not only reading data from the Arduino and sending information back to the Arduino, but actually seeing the data plot in real time. So one of the things you may want to do uh, once you've got your Arduino connected to your Python uh, program is you might want to collect data and write it to a file and save it on your hard drive or on your hard disk or you may want to read from an input file and then use that data along with your Arduino data to do some calculations or print some graphs or whatever. So um, I'm adding this uh, feature to read and write a file to the hard disk uh, as part of this uh, video. Uh, and it's very simple to do. I have some code here from this module that uh, will uh, read an input file, print it out, and then it will create an output file that doesn't exist, write to it, and save it. And all of this is possible by using a library called PathLib. And um, it's a very powerful uh, library. I'm just using two features of it. You, I believe you can create directories, move directories, delete directories, delete files. You can do a, quite a few things with it. I'm just reading and writing a file. And um, so to do that, um, it's really simple. Uh, this is the code that does it. Uh, this is the input file that I've created on my hard drive under the, under the Arduino-Python communication folder. And what I would like to suggest is if you want more information on how to read and write, uh, this uh, website here is very informative. Um, Python for Beginners, they've got a lot of other things that you can research and learn for Python. But uh, this is where I got my information. So uh, let's go through the module or the sketch for Python and see what we have. Um, first, we start off by importing the path live, and I call it path. Uh, the data folder I create, this is the path to my Windows folder. And um, you do need this little R right here, though. Just keep that in mind. I think that's for reading. I'm not really sure, but that R is necessary. Um, and once you've created the path, you can then create different file names to read or write to that folder. And the first block here is to read a file. And the file to open, I say, is equal to data folder, which is this information here, slash input file dot text. And you'll notice that this has single quotes and that the input file name has two quotes. So uh, keep that in mind when you're coding. Uh, next, we need to open that file and assign it to F, which I do here. And then I, I do a print F dot read. And what it's going to do is it reads the entire file at once. So it's actually read the whole thing in. And then here, it, it's going to, for x in f, print x. It's going to go through that, that uh, file that's been read in and print x out character by character. And then it's going to close the file. And then that's all, that's all it's going to do. That's all you need to do to um, read a file. You've got to open the file, read it, and then you must close it. Um, and it's similar with a, a write statement. Basically, um, the write statement uh, is very similar. We file to write. We have our data folder. We have our output file name. 
Now you'll notice over here I have an input file name, but I don't have an output file name. This will create it if it doesn't exist. And you may um, like do error handling for your input file, like I set up here, to make sure the file exists. And if it doesn't, you, you error trap that. Well, I knew the input file was here, so it didn't really matter. Um, I didn't do any error trapping. That wasn't part of my uh, focus. But here with the output file, it doesn't matter. It's just going to create it. And if it already exists, it will overwrite it. And so uh, once we have the string for the output file, we uh, assign file equals open. We open the file, and we, we give the option W, which is to write. Now you can do R to read, or you can do um, A to append. So every time this runs, it makes this data file longer and longer. I just wanted to rewrite it over and over, so that's why I selected W. Um, now here's some statements that I'm going to write in that file. The first uh, line is going to be hello world with a space and then I'm going to do a file dot write. This is our new text file and then I do a slash in which is a new line because you can't do um, a write line here or because it, Python doesn't have a write line. So this will print hello world this is our new text file and then it's going to do a carriage return and the next line will say and this is a, a new line period slash new line. Why? Because we can. And then it will close the file and, it will, and you always want to close a file that you've written to because sometimes the file will be there, sometimes it won't. Always close it. And the last statement here is print uh, line return, carriage return, carriage return three times, done reading and writing file. So pretty straightforward. Let's look at our input file. And the input file is just a bunch of pseudo Latin gibberish, so it's going to print all this out. And so let's go ahead and see. Now it's going to cover this up when it runs. I'm going to move it over, but you'll see that there's an input file here and no output file. So let's go ahead and run this. And there's the output file just created. So it read the whole file, the whole input file, which is all this gibberish. And then it printed out character by character until it ended right here. And then um, it created an output file. And then it said done reading and writing file. So let's see what our output file looks like. And you'll see that this is exactly um, what we uh, wanted to print. Hello world, this is our new text file. Hello world, this is our new text file. Carriage return, and this is a new line. And this is a new line, carriage return. Why? Because we can. Why? Because we can. And that very simply is um, how you create and uh, read input files. Um, it's uh, very uh, straightforward. Um, it's not too difficult and you may actually want to capture the data that the Arduino is uh, sending to the Python program and save it in say a, a comma delimited, um, file, delineated file and uh, use it in Excel or other programs. So it's important to be able to save the Arduino information because you may want to process it later and do other things with it as input to another file or another uh, Python sketch which will then send data back to the Arduino. So now you've got your Arduino and your laptop or your PC communicating back and forth and passing data back and forth and actually working together in unison to process data and do uh, many tasks that you may want to uh, look at or do or projects that you want to do. And it really increases the capability of the Arduino um, input and, uh, and modules that, that you can add to it. Say if you had a, um, some sort of temperature sensor, you could read the temperature sen uh, information, send it over to your laptop, process it there, graph it. If it reaches a certain threshold, run other programs that write back to the Arduino, so and then have it handle things accordingly, as opposed to having the Arduino do everything and then slow down because it's processing something like a, a text file when it should be reading maybe um, a ping module or something, getting data in. So it's very powerful uh, and very simple. So I thought that this was important to uh, include in this uh, video, even though it's a little bit of a deviation uh, from just communication between the two devices. So 
I just wanted to add this extra little module, a Python module. Um, it's um, actually a portion of some code written from this website, toptechboy.com. He's the guy that has the class um, in one of his pull-down menus or one of his options, he has Arduino and Python communication, and that's where I got this. And specifically, this will generate 3D images using Python. And so, although the data that I wanted to show you was about plotting, there may be a time when you want to actually create a 3D image that moves based on the Arduino uh, information that you get uh, through the serial port. And Although this doesn't really uh, work with um, any of the Arduino um, uh, data that's passed, you could have a serial, uh, import serial up here, like in some of the other uh, modules that I showed you, the other Py, uh, Python modules. Uh, you could have an in, uh, import serial, and then you could start importing, reading the serial port and reading the data and using it to offset... Uh, this 3D graphics, and you could um, you could use the data to either change the color or change the position, the vector position, or um, the radius. You could have it get bigger or smaller, whatever you want. Uh, here's a box of length four. You could make it length random number, like I had in another uh, uh, earlier on in the video. You could change the width. I mean, you could do all sorts of things. You could dynamically create or change uh, uh, 3D images um, using this this uh, sketch here, this uh, Python module, um, and using data, using the information from the previous uh, Python uh, modules. Um, a lot of these commands are very straightforward, but what's really key is um, right here is the visual library. The visual library, we import everything. Uh, it's what gives you the 3D uh, images. And there's a rod, a cone, a box, a sphere, um, all sorts of other shapes. There's arrows and texts and all sorts of other things that you can make 3D. I just did a few little things here to kind of show you. Um, and basically, uh, let me run it, and you'll see that it does create uh, realistic-looking 3D images. Here are the images. I have them moving. It's very simple. It's a sphere, a box, a cone, and a cylinder. And uh, they're just moving in and out. Uh, it's just a, a loop, a while statement, and an if statement that counts up and down and just plots them in different areas. Um, if you right-click your mouse, you can change the perspective of the of the image. You can have it come at you. Um, you can have it look at it from the side. You can look at it from the top. I mean, it 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 changes dynamically with your mouse, so it's a very powerful tool. And the fact that it actually looks three-dimensional is also really powerful, and it's easy to program. So let's take a look at the uh, programming. Um, in order to run this, you do have to use what's called um, vPython. Um, it's diff a vPython uh, IDE. Uh, basically, uh, it's v-i-d-l-e, vIdle. That you use an idle IDE to run and compile and type in your Python scripts. But to do video or, or um, 3D imaging, you have to use V Python. That's another IDE or IDLE they call it in Python, um, which is good and bad. You're you're limited to only if you want to do the 3D images, you have to use uh, V Python. And if you go to this website, he'll explain all the background to it. But I wanted to put it out there because I'm not sure. I would think that at some point somebody may want to read serial data from or an Arduino and and generate a 3D image and then do something with that 3D image. So that's why I'm giving this right now here at the end of the of my video just as information. So you can create a rod, a cone, a box, a sphere, all sorts of shapes. And then each one has all sorts of attributes, 
that you can claim um, a, a cylinder. You can do the color. You can do the position on the screen, the axis, the radius, a box. You can give the length, the height, the width. You can change all that. Um, uh, here's the, the vector position where it starts, a sphere. Here's where it starts, and you give the color. You can give the radius. I didn't put that in. Uh, real easy to make the 3D image and then manipulate it. Uh, so getting back to the code here, we have count equals zero. Um, I just count up uh, what up uh, from uh, up to ten, and then I count back down to zero, and I just do that back and forth. So it's part of a loop. Um, I say go up is true. That means you you count up, and then when you reach ten, you set it to false, and it goes back down. So while true, we do this loop all the time. I give it a rate of 10, so that slows down the image so that it doesn't uh, go as fast. Um, if go up, if true, then count equals count plus 1. If go up is false, then I fold the else, and I say count is equal to count minus 1. So this makes it move out. This makes it move in. Um, and then I say rod position is equal to vector plus some count offset, and that moves it. And I did that for the cone, the box, and the sphere. And that's, this is what gives it uh, movement. It's very simple to move an object, a 3D image, using this visual library. And then I just say, if count is equal to 10, go up is false. If count is equal to 0, I say true. And that causes it to count up and down. That's it. You, you just load in the, the images you want, and then you just put them in different positions. Simple, simple, and you just have some sort of counting offset, or this could be some data from the Arduino to make the images change. It's really easy. I could get, I could basically say, uh, um, make make the height, uh, make the height uh, here, make it uh, uh, ten, and make the the length uh, uh, twenty. Let's just change the box and see what it looks like. Um, and it comes up, and all of a sudden, the box is a lot bigger. Um, you can see I've changed the width of the box. It's flatter. I didn't change the, the height or the thickness. Um, and it, it's just as easy as that. So it's very powerful to do these 3D graphics and, um, uh, and, and visualize it using... Um, the Arduino uh, co uh, the Arduino input as as data to change the visual image. It's an amazing program, and that's why I think Python is such a good choice to link with the Arduino. Now, that being said, I do want to mention a few things here uh, at the end. Some pros and cons. I, I've shown you all the pros that I find. Um, it's free. It, it, it's easy to code once you know the basics. There's a ton of libraries out there that are free. Um, but what's important is, something to mention here, there are some IDEs. Now, Arduino has different versions of IDEs, and so does Python. Uh, there are different program environments. One of them is called PyCharm. And I initially started with PyCharm, um, and that was kind of helpful, but to a point it became radically very difficult to use. And a lot of the other YouTube videos I saw, I noticed that they were all just using the, the Python I-D-L-E, IDLE. I don't know what IDLE stands for. Interactive Development Something Environment. Uh, I don't know what the L stands for. And that was far easier to use than PyCharm. So I would encourage you not to use PyCharm starting out. Uh, that's good to know. Now, another limitation. Um, you will find that there are two camps of Python. There's the 2.7 camp, which is older... Uh, programs, and there's a ton out there that's written for 2.7, and then there's the 3.x, version 3 and newer, and uh, those are two camps. you got to kind of figure out which one you want to be in. I'm trying to work more towards the 3, version 3 and higher. Um, my version is 3.7. I do have 2.7 on here uh, for some of the stuff. For instance, the the serial input when I, where you type in 1 or 0, you have to use 2.7 for that to work because 3.7 will give you an error. Um, the last thing is VIDLE, or the Video Python um, Interactive uh, Developing 
development environment, uh, the V-I-D-L-E, is another, is a third IDE. Now, they all can lo- they all look exactly the same. They're a simple little notepad-looking type of environment. Uh, but some of them work, some of them don't with certain programs. So keep that in mind. You might be limited to a certain degree. One last thing I also want to show you is um, right here in the program is uh, when you run, you can run a Python shell or you can run a module. Uh, The software here is, your program is called a module. Now when you run a shell, that gives you a Python command console and uh, it will have uh, three um, little arrows like this and you could you can just type code here and it will run it line by line like your program runs. Uh, this Python shell is very similar to your, um, your window DOS shell. It's the same sort of thing, your command shell in DOS, but it runs only Python code. So keep that in mind. There's also that. There's all sorts of environments. Um, what else? Uh, the last thing I want to mention is uh, you need to lo- you learn how to use what's called PIP, P-I-P. Um, you would type it, um, the PIP install, you type in your um, C in your DOS command window, not in your Python shell. I guess you could type in the Python shell, but I've never done it that way. I think in your Python shell, you type install, I-N-S-T-A-L two L's and um, then you space and then you install the module you want to install but but typically the best thing to use is pip and uh, that you run in your uh, Windows DOS shell and um, that's really the best way to install modules so if you wanted to install this visual module you would um, go to um, pi pi.org, P-Y-P-I dot O-R-G. You would do a search on visual, and it would give you a link where you could copy the install command, and then you would go down here to your your um, your DOS command uh, console, and you would paste it in, hit enter, and it would install it for you, and that's really the best way to do it, is to use pip. And again, um, the top tech boy here on his website, one of his lessons is how to install and run and use PIP, and I highly encourage you to use that. Once you get that all done, the the real uh, heart of Python are all of these free um, libraries that you can download and install using PIP, and they can do a ton of very graphic-intensive stuff, uh, Make and that's what really makes... Um, all of this type of graphics here possible and easy to do with very simple syntax and um, and commands Um, it just makes it happen like magic and you can do so many powerful things so um, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you leave comments I I don't respond to comments hopefully other users will but uh, I don't I I just don't have the time Um, but I encourage you to uh, Download the codes that I've put up, uh, that I've stored, and uh, go ahead and f- feel free to use it. Uh, give me a like, subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be putting more interesting things out there. I got a few other very, very cool things coming down the line um, that I think uh, you will find interesting, and I hope you enjoyed this video.